Hey guys, Master Debates here. So in this video, I'll be continuing the scripting tutorial like I did from the last video. So in the last video, we were going over the first type of scripting item known as the switches. Now you can think of switches as the manual scripting items. And I, I define them as manual because basically you have to physically go as a Spartan and hold down a button to activate the switch in order f you know, to actually get it to work. The difference between that and the next type of item, the timers, are that the timers are automatic scripting items in that you don't have to actually activate them as a player in order to get them to work. And actually, you can't activate timers at all. They just automatically go off on their own. So here I have the menu up. If you go to place object and go to scripting, you will see that the second item is the timers. So when you go to the timers, you'll see that there are actually six basic kinds of timers. And I'm going to go over basically what each of them do. Although, as the name implies, they actually do as they say. So the first one you have is timer on. And basically what timer on will do will be activate an object after a set time. So what that means is if I go ahead and spawn a timer, and I'm going to zoom in there. See, here's a timer on. And if I go to the object options and then go to scripting, at the bottom here, you'll see timer slash user data. And if you look at the little caption on the bottom, it says timer duration for scripted timers, game mode specific data for all other items. So the first part, timer duration for scripted timers. This is a scripted timer. Basically what the timer does is it determines the duration it takes for this switch to be activated. So basically, let's say you have an EMP and you want it to be activated in 30 seconds you will take a timer on, you'll set the broadcast channel to anything other than negative one, you'll take the EMP and match the scripting channel to the broadcast channel of this, and then you'll set the timer data to 30 seconds, or just 30, because each little click of the timer is one second. So like, see, it's set to one, that'll be one second, two will be two seconds, etc. So you'd go ahead and set this to 30 seconds, and that would activate that EMP in 30 seconds. Now, if you go back to the objects, you have timer on once, which does the same thing as timer on, but there's a slight difference. So the difference is that timer on will actually continuously turn on the object every 30 seconds in a loop sort of fashion. And that's, you know, so basically, let's say going back to the EMP device example, which I will show later, if you have timer on set to automatically activate the object, and you have some sort of other timer or switch that'll turn it off, the timer on will automatically turn it off from the off state and it'll take 30 seconds from the time it's turned off to do so. Whereas timer on once will only turn on the object at a set duration delay once and it won't loop. So moving on to the next item, timer off, will basically do the same thing as timer on. You set the duration and once that duration is met, the timer will automatically turn off or deactivate the object and that will continuously loop to turn it off, assuming it can be turned on again. Timer off once just won't loop. Now, the last one, timer toggle and timer toggle once, again, similar to the switches. Timer toggle will turn on and off the object using the same duration. So let's say if you set the timer to 15 seconds, 15 seconds will go by, it'll turn the object on, 15 seconds will go by, it'll turn the object off, and it'll keep looping back and forth over and over and over again. Timer toggle once will only go through that once. So it'll turn on the object for 15 seconds. It'll turn it off in another 15 seconds and that's it. And it won't just keep looping. Uh, so timers actually have their use. Um, you can have timers as standalones with a toggle or you can use multiple timers using a combination of on and off or you can actually use the timers in conjunction with the previous type of uh, scripting items, the switches and you can actually use that to set the duration between uh, presses of the switches. Uh, so what I mean by that is this, basically. So I'm going to take a look at the first example here. This is the EMP device, uh, like I talked about. And right now, it is connected to two scripting items. Uh, here you have a switch on, which I went over in the previous video. And here you actually have a timer off. So basically, as I have it set now, here's the switch on, and let me go to the properties. So right now, it's all set as default, zero time, negative one spawn channel, despawn set to false, power channel negative one, and the broadcast channel is set to eight. Now if you go to the EMP device, 
and go to the scripting options, you'll see that again, all defaults, the broadcast channel is set to eight so that it's connected to the switch on. Now here you have the timer off. And if you go to the scripting options here, you can see again, all defaults except for the last two options. The broadcast channel is set to eight to match with the uh, switch on and the EMP device. And the timer is set to 20 seconds. So basically what that'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and activate the EMP with the switch on. So it'll go ahead and activate and it's in a deactivated state. So basically what this does is that I can't hit the switch right now, as you can see, because it's in an off state. So what this timer off will do is from the time I actually go ahead and activate the switch, it'll take a full 20 seconds because of the timer off in order to reactivate the EMP so it can be used again. So 20 seconds go by and then I can hit the switch again. And that's basically one of the uses of the timer to be used to determine the time in between switch presses. So, you know, if I wanted to set this, for example, just to make it faster, um, you know, what if I wanted to set it to just one second? You know, would that make a difference? And yes, it would. So before you saw that I actually couldn't hit the switch over and over again, but now I can do it every second. And the device will emit an EMP blast every single time I hit the switch. Alternatively, if I wanted to have the switch going on and off again continuously, I could actually go ahead and assign a timer to it that would just make it continuously go on and off. Now, mind you, if you do this to an EMP device, this is a good way to max out the performance meter in Forge. So I'm gonna go ahead with this timer toggle. I'm gonna set to the EMP device. And by the way, this again, does not have to touch. I'm gonna set the broadcast channel to eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it so it loops every five seconds. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I should set it a little bit less. Okay, so now I have it set to zero. And as you can see, yeah. <laughs> uh, the performance is fully maxed out. That is very bright. And with no delay, it's just continuously looping. I actually can't delete this right now. Uh, there we go. Oh. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah. So that's one of the practical applications you can use timers for. And I'm gonna actually go ahead over here and showcase another thing uh, linked to a timer. This, which I actually didn't go over in the last video, is the explosion zone, as I like to call it, or as it's officially called, an explosion volume, which is another one of the gadgets. Uh, the explosion volume can be linked to a switch. Uh, basically, if you go to the explosion volume and go to the scripting options, and then go to the broadcast channel, as long as the broadcast channel actually matches a switch, when you hit that switch, it'll cause the explosion zone to actually go off. Now, of course, you can link this to a timer and set it to a duration so that it'll just keep exploding. Um, here, I actually have it linked to a switch on and a timer so that I can hit it every second. Uh, so basically, every single time I press it, it'll explode, and there's only a second delay, so I can just keep pressing it over and over again. Um, and of course, I can go to the timer off here, go to scripting, and change this to 10 seconds, and it'll do the same. So go ahead here, hit the button. And as you'll see, I can't hit it yet. I still can't hit it yet. Still can't hit it yet. And there we go, 10 seconds go by and I can hit it again. And of course the reverse is possible as well. You can have this set to uh, you know, a switch off and then have this set to a timer on and it of course will do the same thing. Now this also works if you're trying to spawn an object. So here in Forge, I have another bridge set up like I did in the last video. This one is actually linked to a timer toggle and it's set for every sen uh, seven seconds to get this bridge to spawn and despawn. So the channel I have here is set to two on the broadcast. On the bridge itself, I have it set to the same channel for the spawn channel uh, two. Uh, can despawn is true so that it can basically spawn in and spawn out continuously. You don't have to change the timer on the actual object. You just have to change the timer 
on the actual timer scripting item, so that's important to know. Um, and of course, because I want it to go in and out continuously, you actually can set it to be placed as start true or false. I actually have gotten it to work in both cases, or it doesn't matter. So in order to better demonstrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and go into custom games so you guys can take a look at this in custom games since you can't test that out in Forge. All right, and now that I've loaded up the map again in custom games, you can see here the bridge isn't here and then it spawns in. Uh, the bridge is actually set uh, to spawn and despawn every seven seconds. So seven seconds go by and it goes, it goes ahead and disappears again. And then if you wait another seven seconds, you'll see that the bridge goes ahead and spawns. Now you can actually do this with any sort of object as long as you set the broadcast channel on the timer to anything other than negative one. And on the object itself, you match the spawn channel to that of the broadcast channel of the timer. Thanks again guys for tuning into the Halo Forge Epidemic for the scripting tutorial. Tune in for the next video, part three, which will cover the last type of scripting items known as triggers. Until next time guys.